presenting the precious gems of the historic New Bedford waterfront. It's not a sleepy little town with no surprises up its sleeves. There are some real old world structures and some great places to see. Join me on a journey to saving New Bedford's waterfront heritage. In this video, we will explore the rich history and cultural significance of New Bedford's waterfront and the efforts being made to preserve it for future generations. Always important. From the historic wars to the iconic fishing industry, there are so many stories and landmarks that make this waterfront so unique. Whether you're a local New Englander or just interested in maritime history, this video is a must watch for anyone passionate about preserving our cultural treasures. Travel across America with me. From its early days as a major whaling hub to its current revitalization efforts, we have to remember New Bedford was one of the busiest whaling ports in all of the world. So much of the waterfront was and has been at risk for being forgotten or overlooked. And I want to show you some specific, amazing structures that have survived and some great locations where major historical events occur. I want to remind you to watch my video about Herman Melville and Siemens Bethel. The link is in the description below. New Bedford has a plethora of old world architectural gems waiting to be discovered. Let's start. It's modern and it's contemporary. It's the New Bedford Whaling Museum and a great place to gather so much information about the whaling history. And I love this wall. They have this outline of a whale's tail. The first whaling vessel launched from New Bedford in 1767, the Dartmouth, was one of the ships later invoked in the Boston Tea Party. The visitor center for the New Bedford Whaling National Historical Park is located in the 3rd District Court of Bristol County. It was once the New Bedford Institution for Savings. And I want you to notice how the name can be inscribed differently. So just because a building has a name etched in the stone doesn't mean it's always been that name etched in stone. As in this case, as the sign reads, this structure has been used for multiple purposes over the decades. It was originally built as a bank in 1850. Created to hold the savings of industrious mechanics, laborers, seamen, widows, miners, and others in moderate circumstances. Please subscribe. This structure, located across the street, is the U.S. Customs House. Replacing a makeshift operation closer to the waterfront, the U.S. Customs House at New Bedford opened on this site in 1836. Here, ship captains walked up the granite steps to register their crews and declare their cargoes before they were granted clearance to leave or enter the port. The man who designed the customs house was Robert Mills. He later designed the Washington Monument. Built almost entirely of granite, it was one of the first entirely fireproof federal buildings. This is the oldest continuously operating custom house in the United States. And this is a mariner's home, home away from sea. The sign reads that it was built in 1795. Wow. Whaling men spent much of their lives at sea, and the ship was their home. But back in port, most of the poor, unskilled sailors knew no one in New Bedford and were essentially homeless until the next voyage. In 1850, Sarah Roch Arnold, daughter of whaling merchants William Roch Jr., donated her father's house to shelter and feed needy seamen. After the whaling industry declined, retired whalemen, merchant seamen, and fishermen lived there. And as I mentioned earlier, I've already done a video on the Seamen's Bethel. You'll want to watch that video. The link is in the description below. It's all about Herman Melville and, you know, the epic novel Moby Dick. And this is the Sundial Building, 1820 restored through the generous efforts of Waterfront Historic Area League, the New England Steamship Foundation, the Sundial Building, 1820. Operating as a state fruit company by the Karalekas family, the Sundial Building was badly damaged in the devastating natural gas explosion on January 18, 1977. Huh, that wasn't all that long ago. Whale saved the federal-style structure from demolition and restored it to its mid-19th century appearance, building the future on the best of the past. And Whale is the Waterfront Historic Area League. Great name that they picked, isn't it? And this is the Caleb Spooner House, 1806. Threatened by demolition because it was in the path of Route 18 extension. This federal style home was moved by whale to this once vacant lot in 1974 and sold to owners who restored it. That was awesome. The New Bedford Preservation Society. And here's the glorious, busy waterfront. This was an exciting sign. And remember, I was talking about this ship a little earlier? Near this spot, in 1767, the first ship built in New Bedford was launched, the Dartmouth. 
Frances Rodge owner. She was one of the vessels boarded by the Boston Tea Party in 1773. This plaque was placed by the New Bedford chapter in 1924. So they've been trying to restore and maintain this history 100 years. I'm so glad. Have you subscribed yet? If not, could you please subscribe? We found this door behind this gate. New Bedford Ship Supply. Ring for service. Uh, we don't need anything. Thank you. It was said that New Bedford lit the world. Candles were a major product of the early whaling industry. The pink stucco Rodman Candleworks building built around 1810 is one of two surviving Candleworks buildings in New Bedford. The process of making spermacetti candles was closely guarded secret when Samuel Rodman learned it from Jacob Rodriguez Rivera of Newport, Rhode Island. Spermacetti is found in the head of a sperm whale and is an oily, whitish, waxy substance. Spermacetti candle making was a multi-season task that involved repeated pressing, congealing, and heating. Spermacetti candles from New Bedford provided a bright, white light, clean burning, hard, and burned longer compared to tallow candles. Before petroleum was discovered, a spermacetti candle was the best on the market and represented a changing culture. These candles were sold all over the world, making New Bedford the city that lit the world. Rodman Candle Works, circa 1810. The former spermacetti candle factory was damaged by fire in the late 1960s, abandoned and scheduled for demolition. The building was rescued by whale and the Architectural Conservation Trust and reopened in 1979 building the future on the best of the past. This sign reads, Seeing double, Water Street was the Wall Street of New Bedford. Practically, all the banks, insurance offices, brokers' offices, lawyers' offices, and telegraph offices were concentrated within these limits. Look at the eight-pillar structure across from you on Water Street and compare it with the photograph here. Built in 1831, the building was designed by architect Russell Warren. For 61 years, the building housed two banks, Merchants Bank on the right and Mechanics Bank on the left. The prosperous whaling elite walked their money through the right door, while humble shopkeepers and skilled tradespeople brought their money through the left. Wow. And this is the focus of this video, saving the past. If you bulldoze your heritage, you become just anywhere. Sarah Delano, President of Whale. The Waterfront Historic Area League was established in 1962 to preserve New Bedford's historic structures. With support from city government, Whale saved and restored much of the area that makes up the National Historical Park. Whale continues to be a vital preservation force of the city. These were the buildings that had provided the support system for the whaling industry. They deserved better than to crumble away or fall to the wrecker. George Perkins, President of Whale. Yes, sir. Absolutely. I totally agree. Tell a friend about my channel. Like, give me a thumbs up, and leave a comment. Tell me about your favorite historical place. Hey, can you take a, a second now and subscribe? Flip-flops on the ground. And classic road trip in New England. In New Bedford, you ought to go there. It is rich in history.